so now coming to alzheimer disease proper so it is a most common type of dementia it's a most common type of major neurocognitive disorder so now coming to alzheimer disease proper so it is a most common type of dementia it's a most common type of major neurocognitive disorder it is usually seen in more than 70 years of age and whenever we assess a patient person people with more than 70 years of age 10% of them will have alzheimer's dementia early stages of alzheimer's disease will have episodic memory loss so how do they come up in clinical uh, picture is that they'll have memory loss mainly for the episodic events like uh, what they had for breakfast or what they had for lunch or the previous day or what happened the previous day if someone has come to their house and they are not able to remember that person has come or they keep asking uh, questions for which uh, answers have been already given so they have a lack of memory for that particular event which has happened that's how they start with they have episodic memory loss their long term memory will be good initially okay so the pathology begins in the medial temporal lobe which is the house for the recent memory and then it goes to the lateral temporal lobe okay then it goes to the medial parietal lobe and then it goes to the lateral frontal lobe this is how the pathology spreads mainly starts with the medial temporal lobe and then ends at the lateral frontal lobe so microscopically what we see in alzheimer disease patients when we do the autopsy when we do the uh, autopsy and take out the sample is that they we see plaques which is which contains uh, mainly tau and a beta okay so they they are collectively called as neurofibrillary fibrillary tangles and which is rich in usually the tau filaments okay hyperphosphorylated tau mainly so the characteristic pattern of uh, alzheimer's disease how they go ahead in their clinical course is that the memory is the first one to get involved so that is especially the especially the recent memory followed by language getting involved so language again it will be predominantly names of an ob- names of the objects okay and then followed by visual spatial dysfunction so visual spatial dysfunction will manifest in the form of unable to come back to the house or when they go out to shop they will not be able to come back inside come back into their house they will miss their way and in at the later stages they can also have difficulty in navigating inside the house they will not be able to tell which uh, where is the bathroom how to go to the bathroom or how to go to the uh, kitchen so that's how it uh, manifest in the later stages in visual spatial domain next is executive dysfunction later on so first is a memory next will be the language and next will be the visual spatial okay and followed by executive so executive dysfunction will mainly be uh, in the form of poor planning poor judgment or unable to complete a task okay unable to plan for an event that's how it spreads so initially it will be memory followed by language mainly for the names of an object followed by uh, we have visual spatial dysfunction and executive dysfunction and uh, we have uh, some atypical uh, alzheimer's disease also so some of them are uh, uh, mentioned here uh, 20 20% of patients can have a different type of manifestations though they are found to have alzheimer's pathology in the autopsies or in the sample in the brain samples clinically they may be uh, branded or they may be named as a different disease sometimes they may be even named as uh, the frontal temporal dementia but these patients have been found to have predominantly alzheimer's pathology when they are autopsied it is post mortem usually so so one is a posterior cortical atrophy here patients mainly have posterior predominant symptoms mainly involving the vision they have visual agnosia they will not be able to identify or uh, identify the 
uh, the person's uh, face which is called as prosopagnosia they will not be able to identify and match the objects though they will be able to see the objects properly they will not be able to identify the object it is mainly because of visual agnosia uh, that is called as postical co posterior cortical atrophy and on imaging we find that they will be predominantly posterior part of the brain which is atrophied here we can see that the posterior part of the brain mainly involved in the occipital region is atrophied okay so they have predominantly visual agnosia next is a logopenic aphasia here mainly the person will not be able to bring out words they'll have a grammatism they will not be able to express themselves there will be problem with fluency of words though it is commonly seen in a type of frontotemporal dementia on autopsies we they have found that these patients predominantly had alzheimer's pathology so this is called as logopenic aphasia then they can also have another type of manifestations in the form of cortico basal syndrome where they'll have predominantly asymmetric parkinsonism that is they have one sided rigidity bradykinesia and myoclonus but on examination in the autopsy they found that they have alzheimer's pathology so next is a frontal ad so initially it was uh, thought to be frontotemporal dementia but again on examination during the autopsy they found that alzheimer's pathologies alzheimer's pathology is present they predominantly come with disc execution followed by memory impairment so what are the clinical features of alzheimer's disease as i have told you already they'll have episodic memory impairment initially to begin with episodic which means that they may not be aware of recent memory they may not be, may have recent memory impairment especially in the uh, uh, in in few uh, which has happened in a few hours or few days before like how they how they come up is that uh, they may not be able to remember who has come to their house a few days before or what they have had for lunch or dinner a few days back or yesterday uh, or the previous day so this is how it comes and also they uh, keep asking the same questions for which the answers have been already given they fail to make uh, keep appointments and they uh, these are the ways in which the episodic memory impairment occurs in these patients so it may go unrecognized uh, and they may uh, the family members may consider this as a part of the regular aging but only when it becomes little more uh, drastic then they start bringing the patient to the hospital or to for medical attention around 12% of uh, uh, mci uh, going to become alzheimer's disease and uh, we call it as prodromal adi ad or alzheimer's disease only when uh, there is biomarker positivity okay so uh, pro, pro uh, prodromal ad or preclinical ad has gained a lot of importance because of uh, Uh, the use of biomarkers and these these are this is a stage where we can actually uh, target uh, for some of the for some of the uh, therapies for these patients so how what are the types of stages of uh, preclinical ad we know so there is stage 0 where there is no biomarker positivity stage 1 where there is asymptomatic amyloidosis so we know that the a beta Uh, 42 levels in the CSF will be low in these patients. Okay, and next is stage two, which involves amyloidosis plus evidence of neural degeneration. Amyloidosis that is basically A beta 42 levels in the CSF will be low, along with the neuronal injury markers in the form of presence of atrophy in the brain or hypometabolism in the temporal or parietal lobes. Stage three is amyloidosis with neurodegeneration plus subtle cognitive changes so they'll have all the three features this is basically the mci which is going into the major or minor cognitive impairment which is going into the ad so here they'll have low a beta 42 levels also they'll have features of atrophy in the mri also hypometabolism in the temporal area in the uh, fdg pet and also increased tau levels in the csf so neuronal injury is usually means that there is uh, mri changes hypometabolism in the pet and increase tau levels and they'll have cognitive changes mainly involving episodic memory which does not impair the adls so we characterize this patients as 
स्टेज थ्री ऑफ प्री क्लिनिकल एडी